Hey gang, two days, or sorry, two videos in one day. I know, crazy. But this is about my doctor. Um, yesterday when I was meeting with my doctor, I just fell, all, I fell in love with him all over again. I think that happens every time I go there. So, I want to share with you all his information. His name is Dr. David Daftian. The spelling of that is D-A-V-T-Y-A-N. He's a board certified in surgery and bariatric medicine. Uh, he specializes in laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding for weight management, as well as he um, is very familiar in the world of cancer. And he is just amazing. On top of that, not only has he performed hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of lap band surgeries, he is also a lap band patient himself. He's eight years post-op, and I've got to be honest with you, when I was doing the research, that alone sold me. And then I got to meet him and uh, conversing with him and listening to him and hearing him talk about, you know, the number of years. I mean, he studied in Europe, as went to UCLA. He studied in Europe with some of the first gastric band doctors ever. Um, this is a passion for him. This is his life. He's affected by it as well, being a patient. Um, he uh, does. He has enough patience to do research on uh, various different things to, and looks at the results and analyzes them and shares them. And um, one of the things we talked about yesterday is, uh, you know, people who overeat even with the lap band. And he basically had a vial, a, a little bottle of saline, which literally is about the size of this card height-wise and maybe a little bit wider. And he said, you should eat one of, your meal should consist of one of these. This is what your lap band can actually hold. Every once in a while, you might double that, right? If you double it every once in a while, it's probably okay. But if you increase that by three, and you're eating that much food on a regular basis, it's going to cause a problem, right? Before the lap band, if you would eat so much food, you'd become extremely full, your stomach would stretch, you could feel the discomfort, but oftentimes we'd keep on eating. And then it would make us, you know, feel fat and bloated and tired and want to take a nap. Uh, with a lap band, right, we make a new little stoma, which is about the size of an acorn, guys. Um, when you're old stomach, you could eat the size of a football. So when you eat with your new acorn stomach, as big as it should allowed to get is the size of a lemon, right? I don't have any lemons here to show you, but you all know what the size of a lemon is. So um, the receptors in our body are there with the lap band, just like before surgery, but now it's even more distinguished, more discomfort to say, hey, you're full and that signal goes to your brain. Well, if we're not eating slow, we're not eating mindfully, we're not chewing everything up, and we're not putting our fork down, it's real easy to overeat, even with the lap band. And there was a patient um, who had had the band for several years, I think three or four, I'm not exactly sure, had lost uh, 75 pounds, and started to uh, see the weight slow. And uh, ends up that the person had, even though they had lost weight, they would overeat way too often, even with the lap band. And with the lap band, as that stomach stretches from overeating, the receptors that say that we're full don't work as well or stop working, right? So you end up with this stretched out band, I'm sorry, not stretched out band, but stretched out stomach, uh, which is not good for the wear and tear on the band, uh, and it's not really good for your progression and weight loss. So uh, he ended up um, doing surgery on the patient and uh, giving her a new band because what she had was a bit outdated and reshaping her, you know, small stomach again so she's back on track. Um, but he doesn't want that to happen to everybody. He doesn't want that to happen to me and I don't want it to happen to you, so I'm sharing it. So check that out. The other thing we talked about was fluoro because uh, so many people have their fills done on fluoro. Uh, and he said the good thing about fluoro, if there is one, is that problems like I just discussed can be seen on the fluoro in advance. Um, and uh, he's not exactly sure yet if that's, if it can make, a, if it makes a difference to see it early on, because it has to come back to the patient about their way of eating. Uh, and it's not necessarily proven yet that if it, it stretches, that it will shrink. So it's questionable, but at least under fluoro, you can see if um, the stomach is starting to stretch. Uh, so that's important. Outside of that, what his research has found is that when um, patients get fills under fluoro, it becomes a visual thing for the person giving the fill. So what ends up, and they use the barium. Well, the barium is thicker, right? So it doesn't move as quickly 
through um, the new stoma, right, when you, when you swallow. Uh, so what ends up happening time and time again is that people who get fills under fluoro are um, loose. Their band's actually not as tight or restricted as it should be. And within a day or a week, they call and say, I have no restriction. I need another fill. Um, the other thing about fluoro <coughs> is that there's radiation involved. And my doctor alone did 40 fills on Thursday, and he wouldn't want to subject himself and or his medical staff to that much radiation. So those are some things um, to consider. So he does the fill, you know, lift up the shirt, get the band, you know, the port, sticks it in, fills you up, asks you to drink, swallow, and the patient is in control of feeling that restriction. And you're drinking the water, which is basically a part of your body anyway, so it moves very quickly and very easily through our new system. Um, so he knows from doing that, that when the patient is mindful about what that feeling is, they're getting the uh, strongest restriction that they possibly can. Um, and that's what we all want anyway. So, you know, I just want to advise you all, um, talk to your doctors, understand what their theories or philosophies are about uh, getting a fill under fluoro and not getting a fill under fluoro. Um, also talk to your doctors about how many surgeries have they done. You know, 10 or 20, even 100? Yeah, I don't think I'm interested. Uh, are they a Latvian patient themselves? Uh, do they look in your eyes and talk to you when they're talking to you? Um, do they spend time with you? I spent an hour and 20 minutes with my guy yesterday, you know? Um, so those are some things I really want you guys to consider if you're pre-banned um, and considering the surgery. So here's the other thing. Call Dr. Dafting's office. If you live in Southern California and you're considering this surgery, you need to meet this man, okay? He's got an office in Cedar Sinai. He's got an office in Glendale. Uh, the phone number is 818-546-1500. You can also call 310-652-1777. On top of that, their website is www.lap.com bandla.com lapbandla.com this guy is amazing i love him love him love him love him and i love saying that about my doctor and his staff is pretty cool too so give him a call um let him know that uh, banded wendy from youtube uh said you could get a free consultation and uh, let me know if you decide to go for the consultation it'd be cool um, i'd like to keep in touch with you and and get your feedback and see what you think about him so anyway that's my spiel for saying I love my doctor and I think you should all check him out if you're in Southern California. It's the best thing you can do for yourself is to meet this man. Um, so anyway, there you go. Have a great one. Take care. Bye.